morning, Mac. And I said, here he comes. Who is it this time? You know? Well, Lena called me to tell me. She, I mean, she, never, she never really much said that it was her that got the information first. She was always attributed to somebody else. Ruth told me, uh, you know, and then all the home she would go. And, you know, and she, you know, it wasn't only about people sick. It was about things going on in that circle. Still more hit circle. We're doing this, UFW, we're doing this. Did you know that we were doing that? I just wanted to make sure you, you knew that. I mean, I thought about, seriously, not a feather to drop around that church. I don't know how she was just so connected with you. I don't know how I remember how she marked it up in that kitchen, too. I mean, people loved it. She brought food Wednesday nights, or if it was uh, her family at a time like this, however it was, uh, if it was bringing food. I almost want to call sometimes and say, We're not feeling well up here. You know? <laughs> Can we get some food? And, you know, of course, she wouldn't have done it. I, I, never, I never really did that. But all I know is that we always, we always uh, sense that aroma of her love and care for us. Wesley, for me, uh, he was just, I just got to tell you, he was such a joy uh, as I visited with him. He, he was one of those uh, that was really appreciated of every moment you spent with him. I mean, he was, he, obviously, he, I mean, he was a good listener, uh, and he, he just he just felt like he, he was totally there with you when you were sitting he sat in that little comfortable chair and we'd talk about events that was going on. And he would say, hey, I read something in the newsletter. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? And it wasn't that he was just trying to make conversation. He was genuinely interested. And it sort of made me think that maybe what was happening was he was kind of gathering all this stuff. And what was he going to do? Pass it off to Ruby. <laughs> what was Ruby going to do? Call me and remind me about it. I mean, that's just kind of, kind of how, how it was with them. I had sewn them together in that way. I remember Wesley, though, when you were with him, and I go to the, you know, we always have a prayer. And I remember I go to pray, and he hold out his hand, he wants you to hold his hand. And uh, I used to have long prayers, and uh, Wesley, I had to short them, because they cut off my blood stuff. <laughs> uh, I mean, he was really in his grip, you know. He was, but you know what? Place and all that 
of stuff. And, and I wish I'd talked to him before I hadn't planned all that stuff from my new house five years ago because it's all dying because I'm here I put it in the wrong place. Now I love me to show me how to do it. But it's, it's an important thing. He really wanted it to be right for people. And then I heard he had made his own concoction of pot and soil uh, called, uh, was it Brown Earth? Was, did I get that right? Did I get that right? All, all that he did was to make this world a better place. Wesley, he was, I was thinking, he was a real gentle man. You know, you know what I'm talking about? But he was really that kind of guy who, for the good of others, would do whatever you ask him as best he could. Now, you have a lot of stories, and I got two more pages of stuff that's not in here. Uh, but about ways in which he and Ruby really filled people with happiness and filled with love. And those are the stories, folks, that we need to hold on to because that's our, that's our, that's our work in life as, as Christian people. They were. I think it's not an example of living in God's higher purpose that I know they really were. And they were a light, I think, that whose candle burned as bright as, as the sun. And I thought, well, indeed, their, their life was some kind of life given for us, wasn't it? It's not everybody we can say that about. We can say it about them. So how am I going to remember uh, the person who's preacher? Think first, always see them as some of the most faithful. Who, no matter what the weather was like, no matter what the, uh, the conditions were uh, with themselves, that somehow they got up early enough, even if it was 5 o'clock in the morning, and put themselves together and got dressed up to their finest like they're going to a dance. And they, 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 they waltzed into that sanctuary every Sunday morning to be filled. God's word. And then two, uh, as ones who took that faith that they were filled with and they took it into the streets and became, I think, as bright as the stars in the sky. That's what I think. Let's pray. Hey God, thank you so much for these lives we live before us. I just pray that you would be with us all as we continue to celebrate their life. Amen. And now, if you will, uh, we uh, turn in your bulletin as we affirm our faith to the Apostles' Creed. I would like you to stand as we do that. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. On the third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From then he shall come to judge the way of the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, like
But as soon as I walked in this door in this church, I was overcome with the joy of how my parents love being in here, and I did too. I feel so much better. <laughs> we were not able to have a church service for mom because of the pandemic. This is what she wanted. She wanted organ music, piano music. She wanted the good old songs. I used to play the piano, not like that. <laughs> and, but mom and I would sit at the piano and we just go through the handbook. And there was something we really liked, we really enjoyed, and I appreciate Dewey and Terry for being part, making this very special. I feel a little bit of closure and happiness that mom got what she really wanted. And, and it's not just for her to hear, but it's to share. It's to share the love of God. She loves singing. Um, and so this, this has been perfect. I don't have a whole lot more to say because Matt, you were great. Um, and I can't speak as well as you can, but I will share a few things. Last May, I talked about mom and her love of her dogs and her family and her savior and what I thought would happen when she got to heaven. God made us humans, so it's natural that he would present people that we knew in the flesh to meet us once we're in heaven. I'm hoping and I know that's what happened when Dad passed away last Saturday. I know he was met by Mom. He was met by David. He was met by his parents. We spent a lot of time together uh, the last nine months. And I decided maybe I needed to learn a little bit more about Daddy's pets. We always had breakfast together. Well, we had lots of meals together with the pandemic. But we would talk more at breakfast than any other time. And one time I said, Dad, I've never heard you talk about your pets. And he said, well, we had Clyde and Dan. And I said, oh, oh, the, the, the dogs? No, they're the mules. <laughs> oh, OK, those were your pets. He said, we would talk to them like they were our pets. We loved them. So who knows, maybe Clyde and Dan are up there saying hey to my daddy. Dad and his family have always had a quick wit about them. I don't know if you've all heard, um, but unfortunately, daddy's brother, Billy, died yesterday. When I talked to my dad's sister, Dale Reed, late afternoon, it was obvious that another death seemed to be too much sadness in such a short time. She had been crying and was quite upset. And she and I have shared a lot of time together. A lot of prayer time, a lot of face time, a lot of grandpad time. Because she was really helping me make decisions about dad's care. And she was trying to assure me that I was doing the best I could. I have had an awful two weeks. But talking to her and many of the friends every day helped me. I'm all, I told her yesterday that I'm immediately pulled up from the dreariness when she calls me. And so yesterday when she was upset, we were able to think of good things such as my daddy welcoming and being a comfort to his brother. There, during the conversation I mentioned to Aunt Delry how bad it seems to have lost her closest and aged siblings within two weeks. Her immediate reply was, it sounds just like something that it would do to me. <laughs> we both laughed. I told her she could always say that God allowed the best siblings to be the last one to enjoy earth. She told me she was going to remember to tell them that. The story that's a little bit different has far more to do with the last nine months of mine and my dad's life together than it does of his childhood or his experiences serving in the Merchant Marines in the Air Force. I thought I would be sharing his incredible love for my mom and how they share their own individual strengths to make anything better. In the Heritage Hall, I bought, I brought the dollhouse that they built in 1967 for my sixth Christmas. 
Mom told me how important building that was for both of them, how they grieved over Grandma's death, my mother's mother, while working on something special. They also began building real houses for real people. My mom, who never had an engineer class on designing houses, learned to draw house plans mostly by looking at magazines. She knew the widths and lengths of plywood and sheetrock so she could design a house with little wasted materials. Dad had learned how to build anything from his dad. Even though my parents both had day jobs, they enjoyed create, creating homes for others. And although the jobs are different, I often thought of my folks as the Jimmy Stewart character and It's a Wonderful Life, as they were concerned about having affordable, sturdy homes for families in the communities. Dad and Mom built over 100 houses in Washington County. In the Heritage Room, there are also two books. You're welcome to look through. One is really falling apart. I've taken pictures of it. Go ahead and look through it. I'm going to remake it at another time. I got off the tangent a little bit. Here we go. It is incredibly hard to be a caregiver, even if you love the person you're caring for, as a daughter loves her daddy. I wanted to do it all. Keep him active, keep him happy, keep him full, keep him talking. All those things might be easy. Taking care of clothing, dishes, finances, and groceries are much harder. I'm sure those of you who are parents are not in your heads. For me, it was quite different because I'm not a parent. But I also was living in a place I had never lived before, in a house that wasn't my home. I was away from my normal routines and pleasures. Being in a pandemic wasn't helpful either. I'm telling you, I really struggled with being a caregiver and giving up my pleasures. But I soon found that God had many surprises mostly good, planned for me. I got to know my mother's many best friends in a way that I never thought about. Couples came to visit Dad and brighten our days. I had new neighbors that became fast, helpful friends that I depended on very much. While I appreciated these gifts of friendship and help, the best gift was yet to come. Nearly every day, Dad would tell me what a great breakfast, breakfast I had cooked for him. We took rides in the Jeep, and he would tell me what a great driver I was. We worked so much in his and mama's yards, which meant he supervised, and I did the work. But he always mentioned how good the yard looked. Every day, Dad said, it sure is good to be with you, sugar girl. He was being grateful, and it made me feel so wonderful. When I think about gratitude, I think about being thankful for the things that are around us, tangibles and intangibles. As I was thinking about what I would like to share, I started reading a little bit more about it. And I discovered it's not just that God wants us to say thank you for this and thank you for that and help me with this and help me with that. Thanking God is a way of praising Him. It is a way of saying you are the most almighty God and I love you and I want to be more like you. In my case, I want to be more like my mom. I'd like to be more laid back like my dad. <laughs> but I, I wish that I could be both of them. They are the more fantastic leaders. I want to tell you that, uh, and I mentioned this at the um, earlier service, that one of the things that helped me keep a little bit of sanity was to play music, and I would use Alexa. And I would say, Alexa, play such and such a song, or this song, and my dad would say, how does she find it so fast? <laughs> he, he was really into all the new technology and how we could talk to Aunt Dory using uh, FaceTime and things like that. One of my favorites is Amy Grant's song. It has a beautiful introduction, and I would sing it as I was helping him get dressed. And one day, he started singing it with me. The old rugged cross. That was a, a whole big singer, but he, he, you know, he did jingle bells. Happy birthday. 
But he's saying the old rugged cross and how great they are so clearly and so convincing. What a great blessing that was to me. Gratefulness is more than saying thank you. It is praising God when we say we are thankful. I am thankful for the time that I have in this church. I just feel wonderful. It just brings back really good, warm feelings. And it's because my parents brought me here every Sunday. But it, it is good to be back in a place where I felt the love of God and they showed that love for us as well. Thank you all for the wonderful things you have said and for the wonderful music and for honoring my parents. I will miss them. I'm grateful for them. And I praise God that I was their daughter. I want to mention one other thing. There is dollhouses and the furniture in the Heritage Hall. There's also pictures from the nursery that I'd like for you to see. And you may not know that my mother was an artist. I brought two of her paintings that are in the Heritage Hall as well. I hope you enjoy seeing those.